Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Toll Education Celebrity Show. I'm the host of the show, Neil Haley. Please go to my website, tolltutor.net, for more information. Twitter, Toll Tutor, Neil S. Haley. Facebook on the Simply G Media Network, Simply G Radio Celebrity Segment, powered by the Insightful Player Series. You can go to insightfulplayer.com to check out all the information on Coach Carew. She has partnered with NFL players, and they're doing tremendous things in the community and also have school programs. Go to insightfulplayer.com. Purchase her book and learn about the great school programs they have. So I want to welcome first to my to the program, Jarrett, my co-host. Jarrett, how are you? I'm doing great, Neil, and uh, very excited to to interview our guest today and, and hear the wonderful advice and uh, great story that um, they'll have to share. And he's a current NFL player that plays for the Oakland Raiders. He's played uh, for the Cleveland Browns and also the New Orleans Saints, so he's had a very good NFL career. And uh, and he just, he's really a great guy. I uh, got to talk to him last week, so I'm wo- so excited to welcome the program. Usama Young, insightful player in Us- Usama Young. Usama, thanks for calling. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, we're excited to talk to you, and, and I think that ultimately it's fantastic for people. And when we learn your story, we know learn a lot about things. And I know right now what you're doing is you're involved with your foundation, which we commend. And this is one thing that reason why Jarrett and I started this radio show and started bringing celebrities on and, and athletes, and entertainers, because they really want to give back. So we have to commend you first of all for that foundation. We'll talk about that later. So good job and kudos to you already working on it right off after the, the off-season just ended. I appreciate that, man. I'm trying to keep it going, trying to do as much as possible with it and uh, making an impact for our youth. That's, that's, that's near and dear to me. And growing up in Washington, D.C., faith was a very important thing in your family, wasn't it? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about specifically how that it was instilled in your family? Oh, I, uh, I say that my parents well first off my father my father was uh was was one that didn't take any stuff <laughs> you know and uh my mother did it either she was a little bit she was a little bit softer when it came to uh to uh, what is it punishing or reprimanding her sons i got so, it uh, so okay yeah. i get it so y- your dad was he was the one who was going to handle the the discipline when it needed right. to be, um, when it needed to be there, right, right, absolutely, and, and that's pretty similar and similar in a lot of a lot of ho- households. But uh, eventually, my parents split up; they broke up, and I was about five years old. And uh, my mom continued to, you know, discipline us. But we, all of my brothers, I had four brothers residing in, in you know, in that house, and uh, all of my brothers, we we had a, I wouldn't say fear. Father, but we were didn't want to make any mistakes. Mom was uh, right now. That's that's a little too far, you know. It, it was it was uh, something you wanted to take care of business. You wanted to handle things, and uh, that that uh, that 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 form right there that that made us very disciplined. And you know, we didn't want to mess up, and we wanted to we wanted to make sure we kept a smile on on pop's face, on mom's face, and. Uh, as as children, I was the youngest, and I, I just ultimately followed my brothers. If they made mistakes, I uh, I learned from their mistakes and said, "Okay, I'm not going to mess up that same way." And I think it was a little easier for me as a young as the youngest of the of the boys. But uh, it was just uh, it was also that they had rules and they were going to be followed. And I think I think that was major to my upbringing. That's that's fantastic that you know that the family uh, the involvement in the family understanding the importance of faith and things like that. So Sam, if you said you know I, I'm not going to go to church this week week on uh, this Sunday, what happens? <laughs> no chance, no chance. I, you know what's you know what's wild. Okay, first off, I, I won't do it a little later, but first off, I grew up in a Muslim household, so. My mother and father, we we went to the mosque and we made our our prayers on a daily basis. Day and uh, you know, eventually, once they split up, my father he remarried and a, a Christian a Christian woman, and I I lived with my father. And me being in that Muslim household for so long, I was like, hold on now, we we're going from the mosque to the church. It was kind of a struggle for him, and he didn't immediately spring that on us. It was just throughout the years he, he sprung it, 
he sprung it on us. And I, uh, I say when he started asking me to go to church with him, and when I say asking, it wasn't it wasn't in the sense would you like to. It was more so, hey, uh, are you coming? Are you coming to church? And I was just like, nah, nah. I fought it. I fought it for a while. And he was he was as cool as I've seen my dad handle some things. He he had patience with me, and he didn't force me immediately. But uh, slowly but surely, he started to force me. And I called up some of my older brothers, and I said, hey, uh, dad wants me to go to church with him. He's like, hey, you you live in this household, you under that roof, you got to go unless you want to go through the blows that we did. And I said, you know what, now nah, I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to do that. And I, uh, I went to church, and I started to put it church, and I started to establish a faith in, in God. And it was it was amazing. Because I, I, not to say I was going through the motions when we were followed, following the Islamic faith, but I was very young. I didn't really understand it. And uh, I think it was perfect timing for me, being that I was an adolescent. I knew what was right from wrong, and... I can make that choice on my own, you know, and uh, that was going to help me with it along with my stepmother. And uh, it was it was something that was perfect for me because going dealing with adversity, I found myself understanding that God's got my back. That's that's so important. And, Jarrett, we talk about all the time the insightful players and m- most of them, almost all of them point to their faith as the way they're able to overcome adversity. Uh, right, and, and it's such an important component to to be able to uh, recognize the, the blessings during the good times and uh, when things just all seem to be aligned. And, and then knowing that, as Usama just said, that somebody there has your back when when life becomes challenging. And, and life, we, we are, all of us are challenged at some point in our lives. Some of us, it's on a daily basis. Um, so it, it, I think it really helps us uh, stay grounded and, uh, and stay humble. Would you agree about that for sure? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I, I found out early on that it's easy, it's easy to praise God and say thank you when everything is going great. Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot harder to find faith in in something that you can't see or someone that you can't see but you see his marvelous works and that's what kept me kept me tuned in it kept me positive when when things went wrong when when different friends were locked up or family members passed away or throughout football or baseball or track or whatever sport i was playing or in school things weren't going right or my brothers were struck. It, it, any any type of adversity, it's easy. It's easy to just give up and throw in the towel. But I think that faith I established with God in my teenage years was instrumental to to what I've gotten today. Because a lot of guys that I do know, they they didn't have that, and they didn't have a a father figure that was going to put his foot down and. Uh, but they have a mother that constantly told them that it's important to read. You definitely got to stay in those books. Yeah, it's not cool, but you'll you'll understand later on down the line. And I, I had the wherewithal to 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 stick with that and and really take that in and say, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow that, and uh, I take it as a blessing every day. Absolutely, and and, and you saw my, I I completely hear what you're talking about when when you say this about the faith and stuff. But there are some tough parts. Let's go right specifically. One of the hardest parts is you thought it was your fault when your parents got divorced, and at a young age. So, so kind of share with that share share that share that with us. Yeah, because I I didn't I didn't fully understand exactly what was going on. I uh, I saw you know I saw them. I saw my mother and father get it about saying it was, it was a lot of screaming and yelling and it was just uh, I I didn't know why I asked I asked my brothers about it I never really voiced it I never really voiced uh, how I was how I was coping with it and even even to this day I have trouble opening up about it and I almost don't really feel a need to do it just like hey it happened in the past. We've gone through it. Both of my parents are happy now. They they enjoy one another. They're cool with one another. They have a they have a positive relationship. And you know maybe it happens for the best. So I I, I kind of stay away from 
the negative thoughts that I had when I was young. I didn't know if they were arguing because of me. I, I needed I needed new clothes growing up. I needed new shoes. I, my, all of my brothers, you know, we we were we were growing boys. We were eating out the household, and I don't know if it was finances or what, but we we didn't know what it was. And as the youngest. I really didn't know how to communicate my my misunderstanding of it, and I just I just took it as hey, hey maybe it's me, and I didn't I didn't dwell on it. That was a thing, and I had I had I had a lot of fun in my childhood. I was able to follow, like I said, follow my brothers around and try to do it. When I had a lot of things that were able to take my mind off of it, and every time I uh, went to visit my mother, it was it was great. It was never. It was it was never a dull moment. Yeah, and definitely not, never a dull moment. That's the, that's that's the key part of this. And then when you finally see, and Jared, I think that uh, Usama was able to see through his faith and through the certain situation, he wasn't at fault, but it hurt him very much to see that divorce, Jared. And that's where a lot of times especially successful people learn to deal with that adversity and then take it for their, forward in their lives, Jared. Uh, and there's, and I think this is a great example of what uh, what we're seeing right here. And I, and I love the answer that Osama gave for us, and that was moving forward. And and sometimes, you know, that comes with just plain old maturity when we begin to be able to get a little bit older and, and kind of reflect in a different way than we uh, than we were when we we're younger. And Osama, I've heard you mention your brothers, your father, your mother. Um, what was so much of our, our lives are about respect and, and respecting the, the the people close to us. Um, how important was was that for you, especially taking that onto the the football field, the baseball field? Um, where did that that kind of role of respect come in for you? Uh, I think I think it came in like I said, along with other other values that I established or that I that I grew into really really make my own. I, I think respect was something that that my parents instilled in me and I saw when uh my brother or, or myself when I talked back, we were gonna get popped to it. We were gonna get yelled at. We were gonna get spankings or and that was just in the house. If we got out of the house and did it, <laughs> the the results were gonna be a lot worse. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of uh, humility there, especially outside of the house, right? Right. <laughs> right. And, and I know, I know, times have changed. You can't get as physical as you would like to, or, or some people who get in the past. But I really think that that helped me out because as a child, I, I was a boy. I I would have gotten yelled at and you know just laughed at that kind of felt that off my shoulders. But I didn't like pain, so it was it was one of those things that I saw. If I didn't respect my teachers, and which I never did, I never got a call home or anything from, you know, for talking back to my teachers or my coaches because I understood that I couldn't do this in the house, and it'll make my parents look even worse if I stepped out outside of the house and did. Ah, that, but, that, uh, there's the key to respect: being able to. We talk about this so much on our parenting advice shows that for a for a young person to be able to reflect outside their own world. That was wonderful, Osama, when you said reflecting on my parents. My behavior reflects on my parents, my family. Um, I, I think that is so critical in being able to, to respect others and respect ourselves. All right, when we get back, we're going to go a little bit more into this. I want to touch upon Usama's thought process, especially the faiths growing. You know, you go through your uh, the divorce, you get, you grow up and start really believing in God and doing certain things. Was there any turning point that his faith was tested? And then we'll go into a little bit more about the foundation. And, and football will be part of it, but we this is a great story, and Usama, it's fantastic. You're sharing it with our our, our, our our international audience. You're listening to the Total Education Celebrity Show on the Total Education Network, powered by the Insightful Player Series, and we'll be back in just a moment. We're back to the Total Education Celebrity Show on the Total Education Network, TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Total Tutor, and uh, really enjoying the conversation with Insightful Player. And again, you can go to insightfulplayer.com. Usama Young and uh, he, former. Uh, uh, 
Cleveland Brown, New Orleans Saint, but now Oakland Raider. And it's just really, really an important thing to talk about faith, especially growing up in difficulties and, and you know, a divorce, uh, some of your friends get into trouble. When was your faith most tested? When you finally said, you know what, I really, faith is such an important part of my life. But then something happens that tests that faith. What would you say that turning? i say uh, playing athletics and being, being, being injured was was one of the things that I dealt with and one of the things that, that uh put me in a bind early on because you know, you're still you're still uh feeling almost like superhuman when you're young. You feel like nothing can hurt you. You could do so many things and I started I started getting injured a lot when I was in middle school and high school. And I mean it was it was like not even freak accidents, but it was pulling hamstrings and uh and I I I broke my uh, my humerus. I fractured my humerus, and I uh, had knee surgery. And it was all slowing down that recruiting process that I was going through coming out of high school. And I thought, thought I'm going D1. I'm going to play at a huge university. I'm going to get a D1, Division One scholarship. And you know, my my faith was increasing at the time, and I was feeling like I was doing the right things. And then next thing you know, power injury sets you back, right. and you're like, hey, go on, you. And that it, it really hurt at the time, and you start to, I don't even want to say you curse God, but it was the time for me to say, am I the right thing? Why, is praying worth it? Do I, you know, and you, you start to question all the things that you've been taught. You know, and I, I I almost wanted to say good guy is nothing. Nothing good ever happens for the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I continue I continue to do, to do the positive things. I continue to pray. I continue to 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 seek help and seek guidance and I had a I had a father that always worked hard. He he was a mailman. He was a cab driver. And you know, he, he's working out there. He's hustling. He wasn't getting paid money, but he wasn't hungry. He was happy. He 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 came back home, he took care of his children and he made sure that we were comfortable. It makes you it makes you be even more grateful for what you're doing. So I, I at a young age I understood that even though things are going wrong, I still have a lot of great things going for me. I still don't don't need anything. I, I even though I'm I'm hurt or I'm banged up, I might still be able to go to college. It was it was one of those things where I I, I think I learned early on just to not dwell on the negative, but think about the positive. And that made me made me say, wow, it could be a lot worse. And even now, when I get injured or I go through a, a bout of adversity on the field. I, I tell myself that, you know, it could be a lot worse. And there's so many people that don't have their limbs and can't walk and can't see and don't have all their senses. And it, it makes me it makes me take every little blessing and say, wow, this is amazing. And I, I serve in, the, in God. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so, so powerful, Jared, as we've said so many times about the insightful players. And uh, I, my, my hope is, especially what Coach Carew has been able to do, Jared, is that everyone learns about these insightful players. Because just truly, we know that there are players on the NFL fields that just truly are, uh, are, are just great Human beings. Well, there are there are so many players that um, excel on the football field, but they're not defined by the hash marks. They're not defined by what goes on on that field. They're, they're defined by what they do as as human beings, as, as people out in the community. And um, Usama mentioned about uh, the, the the kind of ethic that he developed, that hard work ethic. Um, Usama, can you tell us a little bit about the? Uh, the, the, the Super Bowl ad for, <laughs> and um, your your time working as a as a vendor. Um, uh, yeah, I can. I, can. Okay. I, I, I think that will highlight the importance of a of a work ethic. It's, it's it's pretty funny because my father would say that my work ethic on the job was terrible, <laughs> as you can see in, in the commercial. It wasn't. Uh, the commercial was that I wasn't selling uh, no cones. We were selling lemonade and cotton candy, and it was at Navy games in Annapolis, Maryland, mm-hmm. and it was Washington and Redskins games and, uh, at FedEx Field, and before that it was uh, RFK Stadium. 
Okay. So I, I, I worked at these soccer games. Oh, D.C. United at RSK Stadium also. So I worked at these soccer games and football games, and I was selling lemonade and cotton candy. And uh, it was a side hustle for my father, but he knew the guy that owned the vendor, the vending company. And he was able to give me a job at a younger age. Because, yeah, we might have violated some work <laughs> working in the uh, laws and everything, but the child labor laws or something. But I was able to get new shoes off of my money and clothes or whatever, so I said, I'm doing it. But anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay, because I don't think anything will humble you as much as having to sell snow cones and cotton candy, um, right. especially at a soccer game. <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm working these steps, steps, and I'm going through. And at the at the Redskins Stadium and RFK and FedEx Field, I used to uh, I used to hit go to the top of the stadium and kind of just relax and watch the game. I would sell I would sell something, and I would go back to watching the game and imagining myself being out on the field. I ended up uh, ended up making a little bit of money, but then I would look at some of the older guys out there who were hustling, and my father was included, hustling, trying to make as much money as possible, getting out crates and crates and uh, season trays. Of, of whatever goods we were, and I, I I I looked at that and I said, man, they working hard, but I'm trying to get out on the field. I'm not trying to be up in this stadium, you know. So I uh, I ended up I ended up seeing again my brothers working hard and trying to perfect their craft on the football field, baseball field, track, basketball court, all that. And I told myself that I was going to su- succeed. In whatever I was doing, but I'm going to put a, a whole lot of effort forth in this game of football and in this game of baseball. And I, I took it. I, one, one of the messages that my brother had on his on his bedroom was get the books, get the weight room. Everything else was secondary. And I took that to heart. He really did it. He ended up, you know, going, doing other things that were that's, and I followed his lead, and I said, all right, he's got a great message up there. I'm going to do that, too. And I, I waited to I not even waited. I put all that other stuff behind me and said, this is what I'm focusing on. And uh, I think that job at FedEx Field and RFK, I think it, it really highlighted the fact that uh, one time at a time on that. Let me play this game for as long as possible. But it pushed me to, it pushed me to uh, put in a lot of work in the weight room and, Make sure to build many bridges with teachers and with my coaches, and show them I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to for my future. You know, so it, not to say that the NFL was all only the only means of success, but it it, it was major for for me to get to. Absolutely, and uh, you show you learned that work ethic. You went really hard, and you, and kind of amazing how we can uh, almost summarize certain parts because there's two things I really want to get to, and one of them is definitely your foundation. So, one of the hardest things that you had to go through in your life is when your father was diagnosed with cancer. Tell me a little bit about that, especially with your your, your relationship with your father, teaching the work ethic, and then to find out this happens. So, your faith was tested on the football field before. Or you you were uh, think you're going major D one and going on and being the superstar and things happen, but tell us the specifically what happened there. Uh, I was in my senior year in college and uh, I I got an invite to an all star game and the combine hadn't came up pro days weren't up yet I wasn't sure where or if I was going to be drafted I hadn't signed with an agent or any of that but you know. If folks were telling me, hey, you got a shot, you, you might go to the league. And, you know, I was just like, all right, that's cool, that's cool. I'm going to keep on working for it, but I got this backup plan. I'm going to get my degree. And if if I'm with a make it, I'm. But uh, before this All Star game, I want to say it was probably two weeks, maybe a week that my father and I see you. And they exactly what was wrong with him. He had, uh, he had fractured his back. And he had passed out, and I didn't. I I, I didn't have a clue what was going on. I, I know my father to be a very healthy guy. He always he always ran around. He always would uh would 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 play with me when I was younger, and it was just one of those things. Where I'm I'm not seeing. I'm not used to seeing him be out like this, and uh, he ended up 
he ended up being diagnosed later on down the line. They said that, you know, he had multiple myeloma. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have a clue what that was. I had to do the research on it. And that's what weakened his boom. And they caused him to fracture, fracture his vertebrae on the job. But uh, it was one of those moments when I saw him connected to all those tools and all the, all the uh, machines they have in the in the emergency room. I've never seen them like that, and it was a reality check for me where I said, "Yeah, hey, hey, he he might be gone. He might be gone in the hour. He might be gone tomorrow." And oh my gosh. you know, I immediately had all these negative thoughts running through my mind that I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to play football. I didn't care about anything going on right then and there except for him getting up. So I remember going back home and, you know, seeing him in that bed. I got the quickest flight I could back home. I, uh, all of my coaches supported it. They said, hey, check out check out Spag. You want to make sure he's good. And I, I was able to talk to him. And he's on his deathbed. And I asked him, I was like, hey, you want me to play in this game? I'm, I'm ready to get this thing up. I can go back home. I can get a job. I can try and work. You know. And he gave me he he gave me a look while he he hadn't did anything he hadn't said anything the whole time I was there he barely moved and he gave me a look and he, a a little grunt like yeah I want you to play in this game <laughs> and I went and that fueled my fire that made me work even harder if possible at that time but I was just like I'm going to do this I'm going to keep them to stay committed and I know God's got it. And I uh, I went out. I played. I played a heck of a game. I had a heck of a week of practice, and I uh, I interviewed with all the coaches. And oh, weeks down the line, he was admitted out of the hospital. He was healing up, and you know they had more different medications. He was able to you know get past that. And he's in his what is it, his eighth year, living living with the multiple myeloma. And you That's unless great. you spent an extended amount of time with him, but he's in great spirits. He's still a strong man of God, and uh, he keeps me. He keeps me committed, and he reminds me every day. That, you know, uh, you gotta, you gotta be appreciative of all that you're blessed with. Amazing and uh, amazing to hear the story and, and how you were willing to give up everything just for your father. And another part of showing more than football. Life is more than football and it's your faith and whatever you could do for your father, you could do. And another thing, Jarrett, and this is the other thing, he, his cousin was shot as well. So he's gone through some very big hardships, but you couldn't tell Jarrett, could you, from talking to him? Well, I, I think those hardships define who we are. So uh, I, I think that in the, the story of Sama shared with us, uh, you know, that. That is what reveals his character, um, and, and I certainly am thrilled to have him on board. And, Neil, I know you have to let me get this question out before uh, we, we run out of time here. And, um, Osama, why, why do the, the, the foundation work? Why, why go on that mission? And, and I've read about your foundation and specifically the mission of, of meeting the 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 young people, the young families that are so underserved. Why do that? I had another thing that goes back to childhood, and whether I was in the Muslim household when I was uh, when I was a youth, or when I was in the Christian household, my parents, my my mother and father, we constantly went out and served our community. Uh, I think both of them, a word that described both of them, is selfless. <laughs> A great word to describe both of them is selfless. They, they never cared about just themselves. They cared about the others around them and was outside of their children. I was outside of myself and my brothers. And it, it was all about making sure that everyone else was taken care of. So it was, we, we, we went out. I remember in DC, downtown, right, right by the White House where several, it's, it's crazy, but several homeless folks and, you know, several people that don't have it are there, and we served them, we fed them, we whatever we could to make them comfortable during those winters. And it would just be random times we went out and served. And uh, I think doing those things constantly when I was younger made me want to serve as much as possible when I 
when I when I got a little older. And I, I did it throughout college. I went out and did as much as possible. And once I got into the NFL, I said, I think education is a is a major way to empower our youth. Uh, it's nice. obvious, but it goes it goes outside of just in the classroom. So I try to do it through athletics. I try to do it through fun field trips, taking the kids on college tours. I, I try to do it in my football and where, yeah, we play football and the cheerleaders cheer. They learn the dance routine. But we also have several guys that I look up to, their peers, and several guys that uh, that came that were were in the league before me. Talk to the kids or some of my friends that have have uh, other jobs now. One of them is an FBI agent. One of them is is a is a teacher. One of them coaches, and I have different people talk. Tell them, hey, take care of your business. Make sure you're making the most out of your potential. Make sure you're doing as much as you can. Succeed. You're not following the lead. You're, I mean, you're not following. You're exactly, leading. You're, yes. You know, so many, so many of those vital, vital principles and messages I try to relate to the kids on a consistent basis, and that's what the foundation is about, and that's what made me say, yeah, it's cool going out to the schools and everything, but I want to put an end to this, and I want to get a group of people gathered together that are willing to volunteer, and then I want to get as much people that. Are, are are down to donate and help us Fantastic. come up with these programs and do these things. So it was a uh, it was a good move, and I'm we're trying to grow. And I got several goals, and I try to I try to keep keep the goals on my mind and keep on coming up with more things to do and think of the future because can't get stuck in the past. Exactly, and you want something that you're gonna be excited about once your career is over in the NFL. One now this uh, uh the one that I really uh always like to ask the players and it's because what does it mean to be an insightful player? Because we, the, if you look at this fraternity of people that are insightful players, they're just such tremendous human beings. They're doing such great work in the community. If we can bottle that in the entire NFL or in all athletics and so anything that people that can help really make a change and difference based on your celebrity status, tell us what it means to be an insightful player. It means a whole lot to me. It's uh, I can't I can't put it in one word or one sentence. But... I can say that I know how the general public looks at football players or professional athletes, and it's not normally in a positive life, life outside of our skills on the field. So I know that insightful player, the insightful player has a lot to do more so with us out of the field and all of the things that we do outside what we do on that field or on that court or on that whatever whatever our playing field is, it, it matters more about what we're doing in our community or our stories before we got there, the hard work that yes. it took to get yeah. us to where we are. And there's so many, so many things that I look up to or so many people that I look up to, including my peers and guys that I play ball against or played with. And I did the book, and I said, wow, these are some good guys. And I was able to meet some of them. I've been able to play alongside some of them. And, and just to say that, you know, I'm looked at as an insightful player is a tremendous honor, but it fuels me to continue to do good things. Absolutely. So where can we uh, – Usama, I wish we had more time to talk. Uh, where can we find information on you and learn more about your foundation and what you do? Uh, it's online, Usama Young. Com, or you type in Usama Young. Com, it'll forward you to the site. Uh, we have different events going on. Uh, the next thing going on with college, Charlie. I'm residing down here now, and uh, I'm going to take as many as many kids out of the inner city schools as possible, local universities, and then we'll be doing a summer camp in June and a golf outing to raise funds. And you can check out on UsamaYoung.com. And you'll see all the stuff we're doing there. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to do as much as we can. If you got any suggestions, feel free to leave a note. We'll get back to you ASAP. Well, I, I like that you're yeah, open yeah, to exactly. other input. Yeah. I, I do. And boy, you know, I, I I have to jump in here really. Quick oh, oh we do. Is, we have about one is, minute. One I minute. know, and this is this is what I hear um, from Usama and, and so many wonderful players and people out there. Um, not self-serving. 
instead selfless. And that is so powerful. So I like that final point. And Usama, I was about to say, we definitely going to have to have you back on the show yeah. and especially uh, to talk more about how you made it in the NFL. But I thought this story is tremendous. You are doing such tremendous things and enjoy your off season. And before you know it, you'll be back on the football field again. And as we were talking off air, we don't. It's going to be interesting to see where you end up, but we'll be following your career, and I'm a huge fan of yours after getting to talk to you. So thanks again for calling. Uh, thank you. Uh-huh. All right, take care. You're listening to the Toll Education Celebrity Show on the Toll Education Network, and we'll be back in just a moment.